Next up, at UFC 300, we have Sadiq Youssef taking on Diego Lopez. This is another very good fight. Sadiq Youssef coming off of a main event, taking on Diego Lopez, one of the most surging, most surging doesn't work, which is why I paused. I tried to tried to pivot, couldn't figure it out. One of the more surging, nope. We have a surging prospect in Diego Lopez coming off of a handful of quality wins in the UFC. Sadiq Youssef, 13-3 and three in the entirety of his career. 3-2 and two in his last five. He is coming off that decision loss to Edson Barboza in his first ever main event. He's taking on Diego Lopez. And it is Lopez and not Lopes. He's 23-6 and six overall. 4-1 and one in his last five. Coming off his second UFC stoppage win. This is... I'm not going to say this is. This should be a clash of the styles. This should be striker versus grappler. But it won't be. Because Diego Lopez doesn't grapple offensively as much as he should. But we got Sadiq Youssef. Powerful, fast, accurate striker. Sadiq Youssef is very, very good. He's a fantastic striker with decent power, incredible speed. He has a wide variety of attacks. He's 7-2 and two in the UFC. He has outstruck every single opponent, including Arnold Allen and Edison Barbosa in those losses. Edison Barbosa's three takedowns were probably the difference in that fight. He landed more strikes, and he looked pretty good striking with one of the best strikers in that division. They did drop each other in that fight, so we got to see Sadiq work his way through a little bit of adversity. He's taking on Diego Lopez. He's a very dangerous grappler. He's coaching some of the best fighters in Mexico. He is their MMA coach and their jiu-jitsu coach. And grappling-wise, technique-wise, it's all there. And even in his hands, he's got very good power. But his striking technique, the raw technique, isn't quite there yet. But he does have power. He enjoys fighting. He likes to be funny. He likes to come forward. He wants to swing wild. And it worked against Pat Sabatini. It worked against Gavin Tucker. It wasn't quite what happened against Gavin Tucker. But those things work. The only thing that worries me when you're breaking down a Diego Lopez fight is he doesn't really shoot offensive takedowns. He's perfectly happy to be taken down, but he doesn't shoot offensive takedowns. His striking can be clean. He'll move forward. He'll be busy. If you do something, he'll capitalize on a mistake. But you can't trust them to come in here and say, you know what? Sadiq's going to be faster than me. He's going to be the better striker. I need to wrestle. You can't trust him to do that. So I don't think he will do that. And I think he's going to get pieced up. I am going to pick Sadiq Youssef here. Not oh the most. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God, man. So let me give you Jacob's breakdown here. Jacob thinks all of those women at that Lobo gym are attractive. And because he thinks those women are attractive and because he, he wants some interactions from them and he'll tell you which ones follow him on Instagram, I think Loopy does. And so because he has an avenue into the gym and uh, has pictures of them on his walls in his single bedroom apartment, he is now going to pick everybody that's ever come out of that gym and make him sound amazing. So let's all sit and let Jacob flirt with the women at the Lobo gym vicariously through their coach, Diego Lopez. Go ahead, Jacob. Let us know how this goes. Yeah, Diego Lupe, uh, Lupus. Diego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Lupe okay. On the mind. Okay. Lupe yeah. on the mind. <laughs> Diego Lopez is, uh, yeah, what a great dude, huh? I mean, at, at, <laughs> at, Lo, at Lobo, you know, with Grasso, with uh, Aldana, with Lupe, with a lot of those girls, and uh, does a great job <laughs> with them. I mean, jujitsu coach, as you mentioned. Uh, obviously, I think it's Grasso's father who's actually like the actual, or her, her uncle is actually the, the head coach and the striking coach, but Diego is definitely involved with the game planning stuff like that does a great job in this fight i worry angelo and that's that's the god honest truth i love i love diego lopez i i think he's more than capable of winning this fight in the striking especially on the ground and listen to me now everyone he is my pick i put money on him i i, I trust him to that effect but there is in the back of my mind a worry because diego lopez doesn't give a fuck Four more lock of the week. I know my lock of the week's very, very well. This guy does not give a fuck. The other thing he does not give a fuck about is shooting takedowns like Angelo said, <laughs> being offensive with that grappling. He wants to knock out Sadiq Youssef. He can probably knock out or at least hurt Sadiq Youssef. But in those exchanges, his defensive striking is not very good. He can get hit. He can get dropped. And he's kind of like a, uh, like a Charles Oliveira. 
to where it's, it's he's going to get dropped and he's going to be, you know, okay, let's play this ground game and try to survive. But this is a very dangerous thing to play against Sadiq because... Sadiq has shown that he can be low volume. And if you just kind of point fight him, if and Diego's not going to do this. I know he's not going to do this. But if he comes in and just point fights Sadiq, eventually Sadiq will, will get a little bit too aggressive. Then he let him make the mistake, Diego. Don't get in, don't get way too aggressive, get in the pocket, throw an extended combination, and all of a sudden, uh-oh, now you're on the ground. You just stay out of danger. Let's let's extend this fight a little bit. And then let's try to mix in some wrestling. Or if you're going to pressure, be very smart pressure. And maybe you can draw out a takedown from Sadiq. Because if Sadiq doesn't really like the pressure, instead of brawling out of it and worry about getting knocked out, he literally might shoot a takedown for no guy. I mean, he, Sadiq, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't, you shouldn't <laughs> but he could, right? Because you can take Diego down. And you can. We've seen people stay safe-ish in, those, in, in that regard. So my pick is Diego. I do worry if he comes in and just goes gangbusters trying to knock out Sadiq because Sadiq can no, knock out anybody. But I, I got to trust Diego. He's a tough dude. I think he gets in and makes it nasty. Hopefully he finds a grappling exchange. Um, but I, I got to go Diego. He, he just he, It just feels like, I mean, dream, believe. <laughs> um... Can't read backwards. Nope. And hammock. make it happen. Oh, hammock. Yeah. And make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, just the pick, baby. Uh, anybody was wondering what was going on there. That is what's tattooed directly across Diego Lopez's chest. Are you going to trust your boy at eighty five hundred dollars? Yeah, I think I think this one's over quick. You know, I, I, a lot it of people kind of like the uh, the over or whatever it is. I I think this one's gonna be over quick. Diego's gonna get in his face, and we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> and I hope it's, I hope it's Diego. <laughs> uh, if Sadiq had a little more power, because he does tend to be, he does have power. He's got some knockouts in the UFC, but he, the power is more speed. He's just so lightning fast, and then it's like, whoa, catches you off guard. Um, if there was a touch more, just raw hips punching power. I'd be all over him, but you know, I, I do think this is a perfect fight for both of them. We're gonna find out where Sadiq is in the in the hierarchy, and we're gonna find out how good of a prospect Diego Lopez actually is. Because as UFC debut, we kind of got you know taken down and wet blanketed from Mosvar Evelyev, mm -hmm. and since then he's looked spectacular. So I am on the Sadiq side. And I think the striking is gonna matter more here because we know Diego's not gonna shoot takedowns. What was that? Yeah, and, and in theory, Sadiq is a great opponent for Diego because Sadiq's not going to get in his face and, and be no, like he's this a crazy pressure striker. striker. Yeah. And if you're Diego Lopes, I, I would – it's ones and twos. That's all you need. Don't throw extended combinations because that's where you're going to get caught. But if you just throw ones and twos, you're going to be able to stay safe. You're going to be able to land and maybe land something of effect and then work in the grappling. But, yeah. Yeah, it should be uh, – this should be a really fun fight as our moth fight. Moth. Damn it. Mm. I was, I've been doing so well, dude. I, that was only my second blunder. Most fights on this card. But you can unlock bets for all of them. Picks for all of them. Tools for every single fight on this card and every other fight in the month. And not in the month like the month of April. A 30-day month. If you sign up on April, whatever the hell today is, the 9th, you will have full access Till May 9th. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. It is only freaking $10 a month. And as Jacob always says, you're going to spend $10 on some dumbass parlay with 17 legs. It's going to miss anyway. You might as well put that money to good use. It's a phenomenal way to support us and keep the lights on. There are over 3,000, well over 3,000 of you doing that. We appreciate all of you. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. Junior Rank says... Uncle Ange with the returning list. It's it's fighting its way back. It is clawing its way back in. And, I'm, and uh, yeah, I don't want to put out your business too much, but I want to interject there and say that Angelo is working on it. I mean, you're at those classes. Yeah, speech pathologist. Four yeah. or five times a week, something like that. You know, three hours every single night. And uh, they're really doing a number on them, and, and we're praying for them. Um, the, the tongue exercises. Uh, I am training. Say what now? The Three days a week. We have a $5 super chat from Ben M. What up, fellas? Can y'all give a shout to my wife? I think I can say that. Nydia. <laughs> She's watching the channel with me right now. Uh, I read these very thoroughly now. <laughs> like, we've been... The worst one I ever got was Jacob and I, the old school fans. We appreciate you, Ben. And shout out Nydia. The uh, the worst one that I ever got, I'm not nearly as bad as uh, Michael Bisping. He'll read anything. He's freaking Ron Burgundy. 
Uh, Jacob and I were live streaming in my old house. One of our very first live streams ever. We were just watching the fights together, reacting. The channel wasn't nearly as big as it is now, but there were some people in there hanging out. And somebody's like, I love you guys. Can you give me a shout out? And it was Ice Wallow C-O-M-E. So I just wrote, oh, shout out. I swallow cum. I was like, damn it. So it did not go well for me. Did not go well for me. Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you.